Now this one, actually, I already have a home picked out for for both of these. So I was, I think I was hoping for sixes, but um, I just I was testing their limits of 1970s centering, and uh, I was hoping. See, I think it's, for it to be a seven, I believe it has to be 70, 70, 30, or 75, 25 centering at least, I believe, is their protocol. Um, so these would not qualify for that, obviously. So this was just my mistake. But these, I mean, they were 99 cents a piece or something like that. So uh, Now here's an example of one where I had it set aside. This is a five. I had it set aside, but it's got a crease. And I meant to, I didn't mean to send this. So there were, there were several cards in this order that I accidentally sent because I forgot to take them out. After I decided I didn't want to send them, I forgot to take them out of the, the uh, card saver ones. So they just, they remained in the pile or they remained close to the pile, and I just screwed up. I, I'd simply see, as you can see, there's a crease. Well, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a crease right here. And then this one's got a similar crease. And I remember when I bought these, seeing the crease. And they're only 99 cents, 79 cents, whatever. Um, no big deal. But um, that's my completely my fault. So I screwed that up. Um, but they're both Opeaches. You know, one's kind of a common scene. It was just really sharp. So, or pretty clean, you know, fairly well centered. And then this one, it just got that crease in it that I, I just simply accidentally sent these in. So if anybody wants these, just leave a message. I'll send them to you. You know, you know, you got a kid or something, or anybody wants these at all free. Just all you got to do is just email me your uh, your address, leave a message first, and claim it, and then we'll figure it out from there. Um, okay, so the tall boy situation I, I don't understand what's going on with the tall boys, but but the, but the ones I have set aside here are the ones that I, I was able to find a flaw with, the, and, and I agreed with them enough. Anyway, here we got to get going. Malcolm McDowell, um, Tolly and Soran in a nine. This one's in an eight. So that's his, arguably, Mark, Malcolm McDowell's first card from what I have gathered so far. And here's another solo card of him in the set. That one's in a nine. Um, this one got it in eight. Um, this is a six. This is the Who, 1974 uh, Panini Picture Pop. I didn't think they'd come in gigantic cases like this but this is available it's a six roger daltrey there solo the who there's several who items in this order and i don't i'm not a fan of the who at all so not that i you know i respect some of their music but i don't listen to it and i, I love classic rock but i don't i don't like the who here's the who band and this one's in a seven so these, these were packed fresh i just pulled them straight out of the pack and eventually got around to grading them so that's cool. You got uh, um, Pete Townsend in there and the other guys as well, and uh, Roger Daltrey. But that's that's in a nice seven. So 1974 card in seven ain't too bad, ain't too bad. But I thought I thought both I thought all three of these would grade one grade higher. The uh, Roger Daltrey has got a little bit of smulch on the side, and here's Gladys Knight and the Pips. I graded this because because she's still she's still kicking and uh, she's you know an icon in the music industry and it was in really good shape. So. I'm actually, I was actually hoping for a seven or an eight on this one as well, but it ended up a six. So all three of those are for sale as well. For sale, for trade, Dave DeBusher, um, Hall of Famer here, tall boy. Now this one, I still almost feel like it could be a seven, but it's got that little stain up there. So, but these, like I said, man, I used, well, there's a little chippage on the side that I do not remember. I don't know. Um, I feel very let down. On these grades, um, the Willis Reed, the two Willis Reeds were the worst of the two that I bought by far. They were OC, as you can see, pretty bad. You know, um, I still don't see why they're fives, but those were the worst of the bunch when I bought them, and they were also the most expensive of the bunch as well. So that's kind of cruddy. But so here's a Jerry Lucas in a six point five. I believe these will all be available. I think I'm going to keep, I have a Billy Cunningham 6.5 already. So and here's another Bill Bradley in a five. As you can see, I mean, I really don't, I mean, it's OC, sure. 
I just I, did, I don't understand. I really don't understand. I might have to have those them review these as well. But um, there's a Billy Cunningham, and it's just it's crazy sharp. These are pack fresh. These cards are are literally pack fresh. Little fish eye to the left of his head there, but or right of his head from my perspective, I guess. And here's a uh, Billy Cunningham. Now I actually I kind of like this better than my BVG seven point five, so I might keep it. I might keep this one and trade the BVG. I don't know yet. Because I feel like these are undergraded. So, And then here's an unselled um, and a 7. And now that's that's keeper grade for me. It's a 1969 card and a 7. I, I was really, really hoping for an 8 or an 8.5 on, on some of the unselleds. And then this one is a 6. And, uh, you know, honestly, I really just don't agree. I just don't agree. I feel like that's a 7 as well. So... I feel like it's a 7 and an 8, not a 6 and a 7. Um, Andy Dwyer, 2013 Press Pass Parson, Parks and Rec. Foil uh, Parallel. So this is Chris Pratt's arguably rookie, and it actually says Chris Pratt like that. So I got two more of these about to go out. I have a base and a foil going out in the next order. Um, and that's a 10, though. So that's, uh, that's a good card. Got a Kate Upton uh, 2012 Topps Allen and Ginter Mini. Justin Verlander's wife and... Uh, Obviously, supermodel. Chuck Liddell, uh, 2009 Goodwin Champions Mini. Just a regular back. I think they're a different color on the front this year, actually. Um, the, all of these ones I'm showing first will likely be available. I don't collect UFC um, or, or boxing. I don't have any boxing in this order, but 9.5 on the Liddell full size. So this is a rookie. This is, I believe that's a rookie. That's I believe that's the same... It's the same year as his all of his um, licensed UFC cards. And here's Jerry Lopez, a professional surfer, also a super tie in Conan the Barbarian. Um, he's got a, uh, ins I can't think of the name, but there's a sticker he's got from 1986 where he's in the background or over the shoulder of uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. And uh, I think Sandra, um, uh, yeah, the lady in the movie is in there as well. But So that's not his first card, but this is, his first card is a surfer. So he's a professional surfer, uh, very well known for that as well, but he also is an actor. So that's kind of cool. And this is the, the nighttime parallel, which or um, uh, variation, which they did not know. I did put it in there. I put it in there, but they didn't note it. And you'll see that again with some nightmare Elm street cards where um, got a side burger here. Um, I'm just going to give away all the grades before I even show them. Cyberger, 2004 Tops fan favorites. This is the the guy, the godfather of Tops, is what they say, or, or whatever, with the father. The father of modern Tops. I said godfather, but uh, he's the father. Okay, so that's in a 10. Pack pulled. Got a whole bunch of cards from that set. Um, there's a lot of interesting ones, including some umpires and stuff, so I might I might start grading some of that stuff. But here you got the great Bob Shepard in a 9.5. I, I swear I had another one of these, but I don't know where it is. I might have sent it to ComC and already sold it. I don't know. But that's pretty cool. So you got a Bob Shepard first card and a 9.5. Arguably is a rookie. Uh, Yankees announcer. Pretty cool. And here's a Jim Beckett in uh, 05 uh, fan favorites this time, not 04. And uh, I can't remember if this is a promo or if this is pack pulled. But uh, Dr. Jim Beckett, rookie. YouTube personality now. I don't know if everybody knows that, but he's doing this thing on YouTube. Um, so we're counting down. I'm counting down from... Uh, well, I, I guess I already screwed that up, but we're trying to count down from uh, more modern to all the way down to 1966. So that's what we're going to do. So here is the uh, Zach Efron uh, High School Musical Glitter Sticker, Troy. I don't remember his last name, but we'll find out here in a minute. So he's, like I, I, like I was saying in my previous video, he's doing... Um, roles now where uh well, adult roles so to speak um serious roles and that iron claw movie from what i've seen i haven't seen the movie yet but from what i've seen of it it looks awesome i mean it looks it looks legit well done um and everything else so i i i just feel like they're gonna i feel like he's gonna end up in the running for next year's oscars I, they do that sometimes with certain movies that that come late on the docket um, for Oscar season sometimes if something's real good or somebody has a really excellent performance if i remember correctly they'll they Sometimes we'll roll them over till the next Oscar, Oscar season. Pardon me. So here we go. Um, him as well. Um, this is the number four in the set. So this is a secondary card, I would assume. Got that in a 10. So it's Troy Bolton. I keep wanting to say Holton, but it's Bolton. 
and got one in a nine and got one in a 9.5. So that's a secondary card. That's number four on the set. And then this one would be the traditional rookie card, so to speak, if he doesn't have anything earlier, which I don't know if he does or not. I have no idea, but he looks pretty young here. So but got this one in a 10. So this is number one. That's the, the actual rookie card, if you will. I got another one in a 9.5. These were out of a, a box, two boxes I bought, fresh out of the pack. So uh, 9.5. So two 9.5s and a 10, and this one had a surface issue on it, so I knew it was a 9 at best, and it also actually has a little bit of a rough cut at the top here. Sorry for my, my bloody fingertips. I keep, there's a, had a uh, screwdriver sticking out of that finger. I had to cut away part of my, nah, anyway, it was it was awful. Doing self-surgery left-handed when you're a right-hander, uh, because you got it huge flap of skin hanging off your hand it's not fun so it was a pretty nauseating event but that's why i've had tape on my fingers because i'm always doing stuff and getting my hands wet and I, you know i'll just put tape on there because you know band-aids just get your finger all soggy uh 8.5 so this is uh first card i could ever find on uh um quentin tarantino so i don't know if he's got anything earlier but this is it's in pretty decent shape but these cards that are foil and they curve up they don't seem to grade very well. And I think it's partially because of the way they sit. I feel like we're damaging them. These these foil cards that are kind of curled, they're curled upwards. I feel like we're damaging them by putting in them, them in too tight of uh, top loaders, number one. And as well, when they're sitting in the, the, the card saver ones, between the time you put them in there and send them out, I think they're they're smashing the corners and making them less sharp because they're curved up and they're against the pressure of the the card saver one. So I think I'm damaging these cards before I send them in. I think I'm going to start sending like all like say tops rainbows. They're always it's like they cut it's like they cut them upside down or like uh, Little Victory says with the uh, the Panini uh, uh, contenders autographs from the mid two thousands to late two thousands. They're always curved up, so it's like they it's like they slice and cut them upside down. And they're always curved. So when you put them, it's like it dulls the corners. It takes the edge, the the point off the corners. This is uh, uh, William Tippin. This is also, this is uh, Bradley Cooper's first card I could find. And this uh, 2002 al uh, Alias Inkworks, Inkworks Alias. So the show must be named Alias. I don't know the show. Um, but anyway, yeah. So I'm going to start putting them in oversized top loaders with teen bags from now on when I grade any tops rainbow or any kind of curved card like that that is not chrome. So I, I'm gonna I'm gonna test that out because I've had some a little less than stellar grades, and these are cards I pull out of packs, the the uh, baseball ones anyway. Uh, Eric Draven, um, the Crow. This is actually it's the 30 year anniversary of the Crow today, May 11th. If today's I think today's May 11th. So this is the Eric Draven card in an eight. Um, from the crow this is not brandon lee's first card but this is available these are all available i'm going to do the pc stuff at the very end um then the Bar barbie movie was all wild and crazy there for a while you know so got a 93 that's entertainment this is the barbie doll um card so just hoping to get a buck or two you know whatever i can get for these uh kind of riding that hype or whatever it's a little late should have done it a while ago but i got a 9.5 and two nines and uh the whole box of those cost me 11 bucks, so that's out the door. And uh, two, okay, so uh, 93 Skybox Demolition Man, Edgar Friendly. This is uh, Dennis Leary's first card um, that I can find, and I'm a fan of his. So I sent in three. I'm going to keep one. I got two nines, and I believe the other one was a 9.5, but these are both available, and they're, it's – these are really, really nice shape. I actually didn't see any damage on any of the three at all. Literally nothing. So I don't know if it was centering. I don't know how you center these. But um, I need to get the Lenina Len Huxley card out of that uh, set, I think, eventually. Anyway, two of those, both of, the, both of those uh, Dennis Leary's are available. Um, and he's also got a card in the set I'm about to show you right here. So let's see here. This is this is actually another issue. I gotta. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to talk to my rep about a handful of these cards as well. Um, the National Lampoons cards because 
you know, it's actually it's actually kind of the same issue that uh, Bobbles and Ball had ball Bobbles and Ball cards was dealing with um, last month or a month before. Almost the exact same thing. So the, I'll, I'll show those three right now. So here's two of them. This is Samuel L. Jackson. Um, I'm not going to explain what's wrong with them, but but there's there's something wrong with these two cards. And uh, I don't want to elaborate on it, but these two, I don't think I'm going to make them available yet because I just want to, I want to figure out for sure what the actual issue is and what, where it stemmed from. So there is a problem with condition with both of these though. Um, so I got two sixes of Samuel L. Jackson and there is a two Dennis Leary cards in this set as well. Um, three actually, there's one where he's dead and two where he's playing the piano or something. Um, but anyway, two, two sixes, Samuel L. Jackson, if anybody really wants those. And here's the other one. This one's got the same exact issue as those other two, but it's in a seven. So, and then, oh, you know what? This one would be the same. No, nope, this one I think had a dog-eared back corner or something. So th those three had crazy condition stuff. This one didn't, except for I think it's got a dog-eared back corner. And they were all, the whole box I bought, every single card numbered from 100 to 110 was was had a dog-eared back corner, every one. Or, or slightly lifted or folded over every single one. So there's something out of straight out of the factory. So be warned if you buy a box of these, all the actor cards at the end, as you can see, Samuel L. Jackson. So these are the ones that I would collect because it's acknowledging the actor's name personally. Um, I feel like in the long run, these are going to be the ones that people want when they actually realize that, oh, well, Samuel L. Jackson is actually Samuel L. Jackson on this card. So um, that's the way I look at it. Um, but I got two of these, and I think there was another nine that I'm going to keep. So two nines, both available. All the, the sevens and sixes are available as well. Um, I got Kathy Ireland here in an 8.5, same set. And then you also have Emilio Estevez and, and uh, oh, man, the, the guy that played Bull from Night Court's in that set. Um, the guy, Paul Gleason from Breakfast Club is in that set. Um Ken Ken Ober from Remote Control, the show is in that set. Um, gosh, who else? William Shatner's in there, obviously nowhere near his first card. And then also Tim Curry, and it's nowhere near his first card because he's got Rocky Horror Picture Show cards. And uh, I mean, it goes on and on. There's there's so many stars in that movie, it's it's almost ridiculous. And then you got the uh, man, the one guy from Beverly Hills Cop is in there too, in the, in the background in some scenes. He's the police chief or something like that. I think it's Beverly Hills Cop. And then got another Kathy Ireland and an eight here. And uh, one and a nine. All available. She's a pretty lady, but uh, I don't collect her. So all available. And you got a, a I'm going to have about six more minutes left in this video. And then I'm going to make another one. I'm just going to have to do it in two parts. Because um, I don't want to just zip through it, you know. But I, don't also, I also don't want to make it an hour and a half. Um, so I'm going to eat and upload this one. And then I'll I'll do another um, anyway, uh, 91 Tops Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, Secret of the Ooze. I don't even remember if I ever saw this movie. I saw the first one. I remember my buddy's uh, stepmom came and got us out of class and took us to the theater during school to go see the original t t Ninja Turtles. So this is Kevin Nash. This is a wrestler, Kevin Nash, in this suit. So people are looking at this like this is Kevin Nash's first card, and this predates anything he had from the WWE or WWF, whichever one he was in, or WCW. I don't recall um, which one it was. But anyway, that's Kevin Nash. That's Kevin Nash rookie. Now, this one here is the same. Nessie, please. This is the same. Um, Kevin Nash as well. You can't even really even see his face in this one. But this one here, this card had indentions all over the top of it. And I know that's my mistake. So as you can see, there's... That's my mistake. There's no doubt about it. The other ones with damage, Nessie, hush. The other ones with damage, there is there. It's just a different. It's a completely different story. So, all right. So now we got uh, well, about four and a half more minutes here, but I'm gonna try to. So, Alan, uh, the the villain from Die Hard, um, Alan Rickman. This is the first card I could find of him. And he's a classic villain. I mean, this guy's a classic villain. Somebody out there has got to want, want this. But I don't think anybody knew he had a card. So that's Alan Rickman there, um, Robin Hood 1991 Tops. 
um, right there. So he's the villain in Die Hard, and he is also Snape from um, the Harry Potter films. So he's he's got quite the legacy um, as a bad guy. 9.5, here's another one. I think I have one I'm keeping that's a 10, and then the rest are they're all available. Another 9.5, and I got a 10. So got two 10s, and those were all out of a $13 box. So um, then here we got we have uh, Michael. Uh, uh, ah, every time I'm on film, I can't remember his name, and every time I'm off, I can. So this is Michael uh, uh, Wins Wincott. Michael Wincott. So this is the evil guy of Gisborne. But as you can see, if you get a little closer, we got a 9 and a 10, obviously, here. Um, one of these got damaged as well. But that'll have to be figured out. So this is uh, uh, Michael Wincott. He's also top dollar from The Crow, the main villain. And everybody knows how much of an awesome job he does on The Crow. That is an absolute epic all-time villain performance, without a doubt. So this is Michael Wincott. First, Wincott's first card that I'm aware of, and uh, this predates anything he has in the Crow by three years. So interesting little uh, two two little cards in that set. So I bought the box thinking I'm gonna, I'm you know, at first thinking I'm gonna be grading the Morgan Freemans and and uh, Christian Slaters and everything, but pretty much the the uh, uh, Kevin Costner's because he's got previous cards. Then uh, we're getting into some Ghostbusters cards here, it looks like. Okay, so here's a Slimer and a 9.5, 89 OPG. The OC got that one. Couldn't have been any higher just because of the OC, unfortunately. And then here's Merry Christmas New York and a 9. That's a pretty nice one. Got all the Ghostbusters there. And then you got Ghost Catcher Supreme here, the Dan Aykroyd and an 8. Pretty nice. OPG as well. Now these, okay, that's my PC stuff. So I got a, was that all the... Well, I guess I had those are out of order, but I'll try to do a few more here before we get to the break. I'm going to try to make it 30 minutes even. Got a Proby here, 92-93 score. This is score Canadian or French. I think it's considered score Canadian and 9.5. These are hard cards to get. I just had a whole bunch that I pulled from packs, and they've just been sitting in there since 1992. So, But as you can see, it's got a uh, French writing in the back. So they miss, they miss, mislabeled that one. But uh, you got two tops big King Griffey Juniors. Got a 10 on that. Pack pulled way back in the day. And a 9.5. And uh, you know what? I'm going to cut it short here because I have a lot of explain, explaining to do on the next cards because they're all variations. So I'm going to cut it short at 29 and something. And uh, after I eat, I'll record and get the other one going. But I'll try to upload this one in the meantime. Thank you all for watching. Uh, I'll get that other one uploaded as soon as possible on this one as well. God bless and uh, take care.